Hi, everybody. This is David Nevins for City Biz List. And today we continue with another of our discussions sponsored by the Bridge Alliance. And the topic is always repairing America's broken democracy. And most of you, I think, will understand what that means. And today we are delighted to have with us a special guest, Karen Suhaka. And Karen is the founder of an organization called Legination, which is a Bridge Alliance member. So Karen, uh, long introduction, but uh, otherwise, how are you? And uh, welcome to our program. Hi, David. Thank you. I'm doing well. Good, good. Well, we're, we're delighted to have you. So let me start with, um, I'm going to assume as successful as your organization, I think, has been, and you'll talk about that, that most of our viewers um, are not familiar with Legination. So tell us about that, the name, and uh, what you do and what you hope to accomplish. Sure. Well, thank you for the question. So Legination is supposed to be a a play on the word legislation, but for the whole nation. Uh, so we track legislation as it moves through all 50 states and put it all in a database and make it searchable for any citizen to come and look at for free. So you can do research or you can come back and check the progress of things. And then we also offer professional tools for people with a professional interest uh, and who need a more premium service. And that is a subscription service. So there's a fee that goes along with that one. Um, yeah, and the product is called Bill Track 50, which makes more sense probably than, than Legination, as cute as that is. So this occurs, uh, someone who, who reaches out to you, this can happen um, in any state in the country, or how, how do you work? Yes, correct. So we track all 50 states, and we also track Congress. Uh, we just treat them like another state. But anybody can come in and do a search. It's like Google for democracy. You just come in and, and put in your keywords and track whatever you want. So it's easy to get started and easy to use. So, uh, you know, for lack of a better example, if I were interested in some specific piece of healthcare legislation and how that, uh, what other states were doing, how would I just kind of walk me through the process? Sure. So, if you're interested in a healthcare topic like vaccine mandates, or if insurance is going to cover autism or other items like something specific, you would come in and we have just a search bar and you would type in vaccine mandate and we would show you what's going on around the country. And then you can either narrow it to your state if you're specifically interested in what's going on in your state and you want to see how your representatives have voted so that you can um, call them and tell them what you think or even call them before they vote, even better, uh, then you can do that. Or if you're interested in looking for language that has been successful that you would like to suggest to your own representative to introduce in your state, you can do that too. So you might want to be looking at your own state but you might want to be looking at other states for ideas or examples or even things to be worried about, um, to be on guard so that you, you know, make sure that doesn't happen in your state if it's, if it's something you don't want to happen. So, Karen, uh, so therefore, presumably, presumably you have um, a database that is able to track all legislation introduced in 50 different state legislatures, plus, as you mentioned, uh, Congress is is that that's how it works exactly and you make it sound like a lot but it's even more than that so all 50 states each has their own government right everybody's introducing bills and there's about 150 bills 150 thousand bills introduced each year. So there's tons of stuff going on, something that'll affect every business, every person. Um, there's always some sort of proposed law that is going to matter. So how do you go about, um, you know, so I think in Maryland, which just happens to be the one legislature I'm most familiar with, that's there, sure. there are two or three, in a typical year, two or three thousand bills introduced by the almost 200 members of the state legislature. How do you, so you must therefore, um, you know, not only have them in your database, but you must characterize, someone has to look at these and determine 
what they're going to do or affect so you can therefore categorize them properly. Oh, do- David, that would be madness. I wish that we did, but no, it's just a pure keyword search. Oh, it so is. Okay. you say, show me every bill that mentions firearms. We'll show you every bill that mentions firearms. Okay. Okay. Well, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So this is a, um, this is a, a business. Is that correct? Is, or as opposed, it's not a not-for-profit. You can correct me if I'm wrong. That is correct. So I can, my mission is to help people get engaged. And, you know, I think everybody has good ideas and, you know, everybody has something to contribute to our democracy. And so my goal is to get people engaged and informed and involved in the legislative process. But in addition to having our free service, you know, I thought I could either be a nonprofit and try to raise funds and try to, you know, get donations and figure out how to make that sustainable. Or I could have my free part and then also have a a subscription model where people can pay for premium services. And I expected that to be more sustainable, that it would be easier to find customers who would pay me regularly so that I could keep the free part free. And that turned out pretty well. And it had a side benefit, as I learned over the years, of keeping me honest, if you will. Like the tools have to be good if someone's paying for them. I get a lot of feedback. I get a lot of eyes on the data. And that's actually proven very valuable to make sure it's a quality product because, you know, professionals use it as well. So in the beginning, I thought about being a nonprofit but decided to try a subscription model. And that has actually worked out really well for me. So again, just for some clarification, um, in terms of how you were describing it, if I just as an individual was looking to find something that I was interested in and follow how the different states are treating the legalization of marijuana or gun control, whatever the case may be, that is a no charge service to me. Absolutely. So anybody can come in and search for anything and read as many bills as they want and look up as many legislators as they want to get contact info. So therefore, um, at what point, if I were a lobbyist uh, who wanted to follow 20 different, at what point would one uh, need to switch to the pay service? And what what does that provide uh, as opposed to the free service? Right. So that was a big decision for us to make. And we settled on a fairly bright line. If you want email alerts every day about what's getting introduced that meets your search, then you get to subscribe. So as soon as you save the search, then that gives you a bunch of extra capabilities. And the saving the search, that's where the subscription fee is incurred. So once you have saved a search, we'll let you know if any of the bills you care about move. We'll let you know if anything new gets introduced. And we also give you widgets that you can put on your website to inform your members or your constituents or your customers about Mm -hmm. what's going on in a certain area as well. So we also give you tools to inform the public as well as yourself um, about legislation. So you can come in and search and read all you want, but to save the search, that's where there's a fee. And 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 how do, what is the fee, uh, or or how do, what's the range of fee fee for it's that? It's very simple, and we even publish our pricing right on the website. So it's five hundred and fifty dollars a state for an annual subscription, and then thirty five hundred for the whole country, all fifty states, and Congress. And um, so the uh, the name Bill Track Fifty, I can assume, refers to the fifty states and uh, you didn't call yourself Bill Track 51 to throw in Congress, right? And we actually have the DC City Council too. So it should be Bill Track 52, but then people would think that was weeks in a year. So yeah, it would, that would indeed be a little um, confusing. And so in that this, uh, our discussion, um, and you are a member of the Bridge Alliance and Absolutely. The Bridge Alliance is a is an organization of organizations. Just to remind our viewers, that is that is there really to promote democracy and and making sure that our country uh, operates the way it's supposed to. And as I said in the beginning, uh, we we're titling some of these interviews 
uh, repairing America's broken democracy. So if, if it's not obvious to our viewers, kind of describe how you fit into that and your organization. Certainly. And I love the Bridge Alliance and that they're trying to bring together everybody and get everybody, you know, on the same page. So obviously, uh, people have a variety of opinions about different legislation, and they will often try to get people to engage with it, or they will share information that is not actually correct. Uh, so we try to make sure everybody can look up and find out what's really going on and what the truth is and what the bills really say and try to counter kind of any misconceptions out there so that if you get outraged about something you hear and you can't believe that a lawmaker would do that, well, you might want to check and make sure because they might not be doing quite what is being represented. And so in that way, we're trying to take the temperature down and keep everything relatively fact based um, as to what is actually happening. But we also just want people to get involved and start engaging with the process and realize that there are two sides to lots of issues. And we are making, we do have to make hard choices. And, you know, if you see the back and forth and how things get amended and understand that a lot of people are actually doing their best, then that's also helpful, right? And it, it helps build trust in the process. So, yeah, we're just trying to make democracy a little bit more transparent so people can understand what's going on and have a clear view. Yeah, no, I, I, I see that completely. And I guess um, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, while one could um, go to each of 50 different legislative websites and so forth, they could essentially do this on their own. But you're making it, it seems, an awful lot easier with um one one stop uh, one stop shopping opportunity. Yes, we are completely based on publicly available information um, that you could get yourself. Yep, um, we just make it a lot easier to access and save you a ton of time. And then our little sharing widgets are pretty cute and a mm -hmm. nice way to kind of share information with other people. So the key to um, really being able to find out about something um, important to uh, oneself, whatever that topic might be, it would seem to me is making sure you are selecting the, the, the proper keywords. Uh, because, you know, as we all know, legislation occasionally is written in um, confusing ways or ways uh, perhaps not designed uh, to be the most transparent and you're trying to convert it to transparency. Is there any place where are you giving any advice or counsel to anyone who uses your service or that's all up to them to figure out what the topic is and how to access it? Yes, that's a very good point that you've made. Often the title of a bill uh, doesn't give the correct impression about what the bill will be doing. That is very true. And also sometimes the language isn't intentionally obscured. So, um, for example, you might write a bill about abortion, but never use the word abortion to right. make it harder for people to find. So that is true. And that is a difficulty. Unfortunately, right now, we don't have the capacity to go in and write plain text descriptions as much as we would like to because of the volume I mentioned before. So if you can get in the right ballpark, and usually the words you think are a good place to start, then you'll start seeing the bills and the language they're actually using, and then you can refine your search. So as long as you can get you know, anywhere on the dartboard, then usually you can iterate and get to what you want. And I wish it was easier. I wish you didn't have to take a couple of shots at it, but that's where we are. Um, yeah, so that's a, but that's a good point that you can't just take the title of a bill at face value. Right. Well, I, I think in Maryland, I know that uh, there's an office of the legislature that attempts to do a, a summary. Um, and I assume, therefore, that that being public information, you would probably include that uh, with the search as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, several states. Most states actually do provide a nice little summary, and that is so helpful, but not all of them. And I certainly wish that they all did it. 
Um, and also most states, unlike Congress, have a single subject rule so that a bill can actually only be about one thing. Because the big problem in Congress, of course, is they'll tack things on right at the end that you didn't see coming. Um, so at least the states are a little bit easier on that score. Yes, you, you've noticed that about congressional bills, I see, right? It could be about one thing, but end up impacting 100, 100 other things. Exactly. If it's going to pass, uh, they're going to stick stuff in it. Yeah, so so be it, I guess I would say. So, Karen, um, it, it, your, bill, your business is fascinating, and uh, I'm going to actually recommend it to a number of my friends and colleagues who, who regularly look to compare legislation in one state versus... Um, Another, I, I was reading, um, I want you to tell me a little bit about your background and how this came to be. It's, um, I, I probably should not be surprised to uh, find that you you studied math and physics in school um, uh, and not politics to uh, be able to uh, launch a business of this type. So tell us a little bit, Karen, um, you know, uh, briefly, but tell us about your your background and, and then the, the founding of uh, legionation, if you will. I'm impressed that you found out that I have a math and physics degree. Yes, that's true. And my background was never politics. I mean, I voted ever since I was old enough to vote, but it never really went further than that um, because I was doing math. And so the first business I started was around government data and statistics, but in a different field. And I sold that and had a non-compete. And then I was looking around for kind of a new idea. I literally met a guy in an elevator who was talking about this idea he had for a database of legislation like IMDB that you could just look up whatever you heard about and it would be for, you know, he wanted to make it a household name. But then when he started trying to gather the data from the state websites, he found it to be quite challenging. And I thought, well, that I know how to do. I've been doing that for years, but I don't know anything about the politics or who would use it. Um, so that, like, he's on my board and, and now he's actually running for Congress. I'm very <laughs> excited and proud of him. Um, but yeah, so that's, I got the idea from a literal stranger and it's gone great. So once I got involved, I got very passionate. I was always interested in government transparency, but it's been quite fascinating to find out how different all the states are. The 50 states have 50 completely different governments. It's yeah. really quite amazing. Well, that's, um, I think that the, that part's supposed to be the way it is, that uh, we have 50 states and um, and then, of course, we have a, a federal government as well. Um, I find it fascinating. You, you, uh, your notes say that the your business is based in Denver, but you're living in the UK. So, how did that all? Uh, how did that all occur? <laughs> yeah. So, I started the business when I was in Denver um, with the same team that I had been uh, using with for my previous business. A bunch of you know smart programmers. Uh, none of us political, but now we're all pretty involved. Um, and then on Twitter, I met this guy who was pretty funny. Um, yeah, and he was in England. And so eventually we met and got married. And here I am in the UK. And, uh, and Legend Nation continues to uh, flourish out of Denver, Colorado. Yep. So the team's all still there, except, well, that's not true. I have a customer service person in closer to D.C., as you might imagine. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, at this point, running a remote company is not surprising. I started it a few years maybe before we all did it. But, you know, it's quite possible to run a country spread across the world. Well, apparently, you know, once again, you were ahead of your time. I, I'm, I'm not suggesting you uh, predicted the uh, pandemic, but you're... Uh, the fact that you were um, remote before that occurred, um, uh, you know, good good for you in that regard. Um, so um, it's it's fascinating, Karen. And I, what what kind of people, organizations, businesses? You don't have to name names literally, but who who uses you? I guess just in terms of the on the one hand, the the everyday citizen interested in a topic. And then who, what kind of folks uh, or organizations are um, paying for your services? 
Right. So we have lots and lots of everyday people and it gratifies me every day to see the traffic. Uh, as far as paying customers, we have big companies, some of the biggest in the world that are tracking for compliance reasons um, and also just to get out ahead of things. Uh, we have a lot of trade associations or chambers of commerce who are trying to track different business policies and make sure that things are happening in a way that they need them to especially trade associations or organizations that have 50 separate chapters, we are a great way to keep all of that organized. Um, and then we also have nonprofits that have sort of a social mission. So we have, you know, um, LGBT groups or um, Second Amendment groups or, you know, just across the gamut, anyone who has a definite clear point of view about a specific topic uh, because our sharing tools let them keep their members all in the loop and, you know, kind of drive engagement that way. Um, lots of marijuana businesses, of course. Yeah, I, you know, I, anything I, new that's not that well regulated yet, they need, they just need to keep on top of things, autonomous driving, that kind of thing. And your database presumably is um, updated constantly as the, as bills move through different uh, positions in their respective legislatures and so on. Yes, we update the bills every night for new bills coming in and then the actions and votes several times a day. Well, I can see, um, Karen, for sure, why um, you are a part of the bridge, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, part of the bridge alliance. And um, you're clearly um, helping to provide transparency, uh, among other things, to um, issues that aren't always so transparent to the average citizen. I appreciate you saying that. I certainly tried. Well, good for you. So, Karen, before I let you go, um, how does someone reach out to you? How do they engage you? How do they find your services and so on? Sure. So thank you for asking. The website is billtrack50.com. And there's a contact page on that website if you'd like to drop me a note. But my email is karen at legination.com. Um, so pretty easy as far as that goes. Well, Karen, um, thank you so much for your time today. And um, this has been very fascinating. I, I enjoyed our, our short conversation. I hope you did as well. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. I enjoyed the conversation as well. So to our viewers, uh, if you're interested in learning more about what's going on in any number of the state legislatures around the country and or Congress, uh, reach out to Bill Track 50 or Legend Nation uh, or contact Karen directly. In the meantime, this has been a conversation uh, sponsored by the Bridge Alliance, which we call Repairing America's Broken Democracy. And this is David Nevins for City Business. Thank you so much for watching today.